Using the UNO to pass through serial can be frustrating because the serial locks up the use of the Arduino for programming and you also need to have that reset pin set. So a better way of communicating with the ESP8266 is to use software serial so your USB is free to use for debugging or for entering commands. The problem with software serial, however, is it doesn't really run reliably at the default speed that a lot of these ESP8266 modules come with, which is 115200. While people have been able to get an uh, Arduino Uno to do 115200 over software serial, usually you can't do anything else and it's not reliable. And we want it to be reliable because we want to be using it to communicate over the internet. So using software serial and a baud rate of 9600, we can use the serial monitor to communicate with ESP8266 and send and receive information. This sketch is how we do that. Unlike before where we had the RXTX connected to the RX and TX, we have to flip them over. We're going to use the Arduino pin 2 and we're going to connect it to the TX of the ESP8266. And in my diagram, I'm using a green wire for that. And then for pin 3, we connect that to the RX of the ESP8266, which I'm using a blue wire for. We connect ground to ground. We connect 3 volt to the chip power down and to the VCC. If you don't have an ESP8266, you can follow along using Tinkercad. They have a ESP8266 on there. We start the serial, and that's our USB serial communicating from the computer to the Uno 9600. And if your ESP8266 is currently set to 115200, then like I said in the previous video, run this command, and if it errors, use the newer command. From then on, you should be able to communicate via the serial using 9600, and so we can start that as the software serial. The software serial is emulating the hardware serial using our selected pins above. We output this reminder that we need to be using both new line and carriage return in the serial monitor. So make sure that you're set to both new line and carriage return at 9600 board. Otherwise, it just won't understand you. The other option that causes problems is when the RX and TX are flipped. So just make sure that you have those connected to the right pins. Mm -hmm. And then in the loop, all we're doing is listening to see if anything comes back over the software serial. And if it is, we read and write to the USB. So we write whatever is waiting for us over the software serial. And then if there's something on the USB, we send it to the software serial. And so it's both listening and writing on each channel causing the communication to go between your computer to the UNO to the SP8266, back to the SP8266, back to the UNO, back to your computer. And as you can see, I've got it set up and working, and I can do AT commands. And it's ready to go. Now we have the two devices talking to each other without locking up our USB serial connection. We can use the ESP8266 as it was intended to communicate over Wi-Fi and send data and get responses back. This demo uses the ThingSpeak service that we used in previous projects. The only difference between this and the previous circuit layout is I've added two LEDs. I'm using a green LED to tell us when things are okay and data is being transmitted successfully and using a red LED to tell us when it's communicating with ESP8266. So I think of them as the indicating LEDs like on your 
your Wi-Fi router. So that I don't have to share my passwords, I have created a passwords.h file and I'm including it into this sketch. And you'll notice that the libraries use angled brackets, the greater than and less than symbols. And here I'm using quotes. And the reason for that is I'm telling the Arduino compiler to look locally for passwords.h, but software serial isn't in my local directory or folder. It's in the Arduino library, so it should look there. Now, a lot of compilers are smart enough to be able to look in both places, but this is just a convention that I've got into, and it's a, it's a good habit to have because it tells anybody, humans reading it, the difference. So we've got the passwords.h, we've got the software serial library, and again, we're setting up the RX and TX for the ESP serial connection. And then I've got one LED on nine and the other on 13. And the nice advantage of having a LED on pin 13 is when you're compiling or uploading or doing anything with the Arduino, that's the LED that it lights up. So as a notification light, it serves double duty. When we send commands, we want to try a number of attempts and if it doesn't get the response back that it's looking for then we need to know so we've got a boolean called found and we've got a number which is how many attempts we've attempted we set the led pins as output and then just to say it's booting up i flash the communication led and then we output that we're starting and we've got a serial timeout of 5,000 milliseconds, five seconds. You can tweak that number. That's just to make it a little bit more robust. And then we attempt to start the software serial, which is ESP serial object. Then we wait a second to let everything boot up and everything connect correctly. Then we try to connect to Wi-Fi using the credentials we included above. If it connects, then we can say connected to Wi-Fi and we don't keep trying. So we break and that leaves this loop. Then we've got the loop function where we have a get sensor data function that we put into this number. And right now, I'm just generating a random number between zero and a thousand and then returning it. Obviously, this should be enhanced to collect actual sensor data. So humidity, temperature, that kind of thing. When we've got some data, we create this string. And this string is the URL at ThingSpeak that we looked at before. Uh, so we have to provide an API key, which we get from the ThingSpeak account, the field that we want to send data to. And because it's a number, we have to convert it to a string because this is a string URL. Then we say we're sending the data. We do the AT commands. And AT commands are common across a lot of communications devices. And in fact, Back in the day, we had to do AT commands to use modems, if anybody remembers those. But these are the specific commands that we need to do to make a TCP IP connection with a web server over port 80. And so because there's so many commands, we've got a function called send command, which will look for the response that we're hoping for. In this case, the response is okay. In this case, the response is okay. In this case, we're looking for a greater than symbol. We send that command, we wait uh, one and a half seconds, and then we close the connection. We send the AT command to close that connection. And then we wait a minute, and then it does it all again. 
This is the send command function. It asks for the string that we need to send, how many times it should attempt, and then what the expected response is. Each loop, it will see if we've tried too many times, it's essentially a timeout. We set the LED high, we send the command, and we look for the response. If the response is found, then we'll escape this loop. Otherwise, we increment the attempts. And then we turn the LED off. If it was found, then we output to the serial monitor that it is OK, everything's fine, and we blink the green LED. If it wasn't found, we output fail, and it would mean that we'd need to see why if it happens a lot. Assume that you're going to have some failures because it's just a flaky thing to do. And this is our connect Wi-Fi function, and essentially all it does is it sends some specific commands that we already looked at in the serial monitor, and it again toggles the LED on and off. So let's have a look at it in action. So it's starting. Connected to Wi-Fi. Sent the data, closed the connection, and then it'll do it again in a minute.